right, so let's do the role playing. So what were the, what, I'm gonna call you, and then you tell me, you do what they were doing to you on the phone this morning. Okay, cool. All right? Okay, so I'm looking for David, please. Hey David, my name is Paul Argueta. Listen, I'm sure you've already been bombarded by a bunch of calls like this. Um, and, and here's why I'm calling. Your house came up as an expired listing in the multiple listing service. And I wanted to see, when do you plan on selling it again? Well, how do you, you find my number? Yeah, it's a great question. We use a service called Vulcan, which connects us as agents to the expired listing. So I see it was on the market for only about 90 days. If it had sold, were you going to stay here in this area or were you going to move to another part of town? Why do you want to know that? You know, it's a great question. It helps me find out how motivated somebody is. So were you looking for something smaller or were you looking for something larger after you sold it? Wait, how, how did you say you found my number again? So we use a service called Vulcan that connects us to the sell home sellers whose listings have expired. And I see it was only on the market for a short period of time. Tell me, why do you think it didn't sell? Oh, well, that's not really none of your business. I absolutely took it off for a reason. Absolutely. So you took it off for a reason. And I'm sure that if you still got a full price offer and, and it met all the terms that you were looking for originally, I'm sure that's something that you'd still be interested in. Um, how do we show the property? Well, it's off the market. Oh, so it's off the market. So if you got a full price offer, is that something that you would consider? Oh, it's off market for a reason. Oh, it's off market for a reason. I see. And and if it had sold, where were you going to move to next? I guess I came in, but <laughs> that's I'm gonna, it, that's one of two things saying. are going to happen. One of two things are going to happen. They're either going to either going to continue the conversation and answer my questions, mm -hmm. or they're going to hang up the phone. Mm. So, my position is you're either going to participate or you're going to hang up on me. All right. Those are the only two options. So when you're talking to them, but you'll notice that like, it didn't matter what they said, <clears throat> I'd move on to the next question. Right. So I see it didn't sell. Where were you gonna move to next? That's none of your business. That's none of my business, fantastic. So tell me, were you? if it had sold, were you gonna get something larger or were you gonna get something smaller? I told you, it's none of my business. It's none of my business, you're absolutely right. So, you know, why do you think it didn't sell? because I took it off the market. You took it off the market. I completely understand, good for you. Now, if I got you a full price offer, I'm sure that that's something that you still consider. Is that correct? And then they'll say yes or they'll say no. But like, essentially what I keep doing is I keep asking the same question, just in different ways. So where were you gonna move to? Did you wanna stay in this area? Did you want something bigger or did you want something smaller? Did you wanna sell now or did you wanna sell later? Did you want us? Everything is just me giving them options to try to figure out what's what's uh, what's going on, what what their motivation is. Oh, she was like, yeah, you know, some of you they just keep calling over and over again. Okay, so that's not really an objection, though, yeah. right? So I see. So what you're saying then is all these agents keep calling you. Is that right? Right. Okay, great. Well, I, I'll tell you what, I know how I can make it stop. Now tell me, if it sells, will you stay in this area or will you move again to another part of town? Uh -huh. And then you just, you just roll it over. Gotcha. Right? But the idea here is acknowledge what they're saying, approve it so that they feel you're listening. And move on to the next question. Gotcha. But you have to, you have to keep going. Otherwise, the, the minute the conversation stops and there's no like dialogue, like it's just like dead air, then it's done. Mm -hmm. It's awkward and they'll hang up anyway. So you answer your question with a statement, acknowledging them, confirming, and then ask another question. So now let's do it again. Right, but this time you give me some questions that, that might throw you off, okay? So hi, I'm looking for David, please. This is he. Hi David, my name is Paul Argueta. Listen, we've never met. I'm sure that you know by now your house came up as an expired listing. Here's why I'm calling. I wanted to see when you're gonna be selling it again. Well, why do you wanna know that? Well, because at any given moment, David, I'm working with about 15 to 20 pre-approved buyers and I'm sure that one of them would be interested in it. Had it sold, were you gonna stay in this neighborhood or were you gonna move somewhere else? Where were you moving to? Uh, well, I don't really see how that's any of your business. That's none of my business, absolutely. So, were you going to stay in L.A. County or were you going to move out of L.A. County? Uh, I mean, I just told you I was none of your business, but I was probably going to move to L.A. County. Out of, to L.A. County? So, you wanted to stay around the area still, is that is that correct? That's correct. I see. And did you want something smaller or were you looking for something larger? How did it sell? Um, probably something smaller. You were looking for something smaller, I see. And tell me, why do you think the property didn't sell? Uh, well, it was probably, I think it was just due to the agent not really uh, doing this correct.
correct due diligence. I see. So it was due to the agent. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, great. And what will you expect from the next agent that you hire to sell your home? Uh, well, I probably won't put it back on the market for some time. Okay, so you're for a reason. So you're probably not going to put it back on the market for some time. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. And tell me, were you planning on being in your new home about this time when you did have it on the market, or did you want to wait, you know, four to six months to, to get the property? Well, I'll probably wait. I'm uh, I'll probably wait till the summertime. I think houses sell better around the summer. And Got it. Get a full price offer. Fantastic. So what you're saying then is, is that you want to put it back up for sale in the summertime because you think that's a better time to get houses sold. Is that right? Yeah, but Jenny, I talk, I talk to a lot of agents, and to be honest, I don't really think there's a need for any agent. I, I pretty much know what you guys all, all do. You, you know, you just put the house in the, uh, online, so I probably end up just selling it myself. Got it. So what you're telling me then is, is that you want to wait until summer because you think that's a better time to get it sold. And at that time, you're not going to hire an agent to get it sold. Is that right? Yep. Okay, great. Now, during the summer, do you think that there's more homes or less homes up for sale? Uh, probably more homes. There's typically more homes up for sale. Is that right? And so if there's more homes up for sale and there's much more competition that are competing for the buyers that are out there, you know, is that is that better for you or is that worse for you? Uh, it sounds like that'd be worse. It'd probably be worse. So if I could show you a way where we could actually get the property sold down with less competition and still get the price that you want, I'm sure that that's something you'd still be interested in. I'd like to apply for the job of being your agent. Is Thursday good or do you think Friday better? Well, I never I never said I, I wanted an agent, but um, what's your commission? You know, that's a great question. Remind me again what you were paying the last agent that you hired to sell your home. Well, I didn't pay him anything. You didn't pay him anything because the house didn't sell. Isn't that correct? Right. So I promise that when I get there, we're going to discuss commission. But equally more important, I want to make sure that we're on the same page when it comes to price. Because if the house doesn't sell and we can't agree on a price that makes sense to you and a price that makes sense to the buyer, then really I won't get a commission anyway. So I promise that when we get there, we're going to talk about the commission. But I also want to make sure that we're on the same page when it comes to price. So is Thursday morning good or do you think Friday morning's better? Well, what do you think my home is worth? You know, it's a great question. So there's a range of values in your neighborhood, anywhere between seven hundred and fifty thousand up to a million dollars. I see that you had it on the market for seven ninety nine. Um, at that price, were you getting any offers? Uh, no, I was because it didn't sell. Got it. So you weren't getting any offers at that price. And why do you think that is? Uh, I don't know. My house is beautiful. I think it's, it's great. Okay, so there's typically two reasons that a house doesn't sell. It's either the price or the condition. Which of the two reasons do you think it was in your case? Price. It may have been the price, okay. So when I get there, I'll tell you what, you can give me a tour of the home, you can show me all the wonderful things that you've done to it, but more importantly, you can also show me the price. And, and what I'll do is I'll try to figure out why what, why it didn't sell. So Thursday morning, 11 o'clock, or Friday morning, 11 o'clock, which is better? Uh, probably 11. Okay, so Friday or, or Thursday? Uh, Friday. Friday, so let's shoot for Friday at 11 o'clock. I'll see you there. Let me get your email address so I can email you my contact information so you know who I am once I get there. says to me uh, summer months right if somebody says well you know I want to hold off until the summer because I hear that's a better time to sell oh I see so what you're saying then is is that you think that it's a better time to sell during the summer is that correct yes that's correct okay and tell me during the summer do you think that there's more homes up for sale or fewer homes up for sale well there's more there's more and if there's more homes up for sale that means that there's more competition for you that are competing for the buyers that are out there so more competition or less competition which is better for you less competition and if I can show you that there's less competition right now and still get you your price, I'm sure that that's something that you'd be interested in. I'd like to hire, I'd like to apply for the job of being your agent. So Thursday or Friday, which is better? Well, if they say, well, you know, I, I don't, I'm still flexible on it, so I'm probably still going to just, you know, wait until the summertime anyway. I see. So what you're saying then is you're still flexible, but you want to wait until the summertime. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And tell me, do, do you want to start the process in the summertime? Or would you love to be in your new home by the time summer kicks in, which is better for you? Well, I just think holding off to the summer is good. Okay, so you think starting the process in the summer is better than being in your new home by the time summer starts. Is that right? Am I yeah, I, the way I understand it, uh, you know, you can just get a full price offer in the summertime, and I just think the value right now just isn't good for me. Okay, so what you're saying then is it's about the value, is that right? Yeah. So if the value, you're, you're anticipating that the value is going to go up sometime in the summer, is that right? Yeah, I mean, um, I'm familiar with the uh, market, so I know around the, uh, around summertime, there's generally when people, Got it. when else okay. go up in value. So, okay, great. Yeah. That's just great. Wait. I'm just gonna hold to the that's summer. That's a that's a great strategy. So now tell me, if the price, if the value of your home goes up, 
and then you're going to use the proceeds to go buy the, uh, another home. If the value of your home goes up, I'm, we can both agree that it's probably not only going to go up on your home, it's going to go up on all the other homes as well. Isn't, isn't that correct? That's correct. Okay, so if the value of your home goes up by X percent and the value of the other home that you're going to go up but goes up by X percent, then really, was there any when it, was there any additional money that you that you got? Uh, let's say they're uh, let's say they're they're going to move out of state. So okay, the home value in Atlanta is a lot cheaper than it is in Los, Los Angeles. So. Oh, absolutely. So, but in, in the summertime, we can agree that if the home values go up here, they're probably going to go up over there as well, right? Probably. Okay. So it, it's all relative because if it goes up here and then it goes over up there, even if it's by a little bit, then really we didn't really see any true gain. So really it's all about timing. So which is better for you? Selling it now and being in your new home by next summer or waiting until the summer kicks in to start the process? Selling it now sounds good. Yes. So, <clears throat> but look at how I framed everything in the form of a question. I didn't say it, I asked it. And the reason that I do that is because if you say it, it's a lie. But if, I, if they say it, it's the truth. So I have to make them understand without me making a statement. I make my statements in the form of questions, but they're the ones confirming those questions for me. I've just gotten good at doing that. Yeah? How long did it take you to uh, get good at that process? Um, four to six months. Four to six months. Uh, but listening to that stuff. Mm. Every day, every day, every day, every day, every day, every day. Listening to the to the CDs, listening to the audios, reading them, practicing them, looking at my ugly mug in the mirror, reading them off. You know what I mean? Like, I had to, like, get that down. And I just decided, like, you know what, man? I'm tired of this. I'm tired of not knowing what to say. Because if I know what to say, put me in front of anybody, I'm okay. But if I don't know what to say, of course, I'm going to be nervous. So every opportunity to speak to a client is a presentation, whether it be the for sale by owner that we're going to go visit, or whether it be uh, somebody over the phone. Gotcha. Let me wrap up. Any other objections? Oh, commission. Commission's going to come up a lot, so you got to be ready for it. Commission, uh, as you know, uh, commission in California is negotiable. I promise that's one of the things we'll uh, speak about when we meet. It's Thursday. Thursday and Friday, good for you. Um, Friday's okay. I can do Friday, but, you know, I, I got somebody that's going to do it at, like, 4%. So, I mean, unless you can match 4%, there's really no point in us having a conversation. So don't don't debate that, right? Don't get into a fight about commission. So if they say I got someone that says four percent, I see. So what you're saying, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, is that you have someone that would be willing to do it at a discounted rate of four percent? Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, great. I'll tell you what. I will make a mental note of it here. In fact, I'm going to write it down that you do not want to pay more than four percent. And when I get there, I promise that we'll discuss it. Mm. I'll see you Thursday or Friday, better, which is good for you. Huh, Friday. Perfect. 11 o'clock or 1 o'clock. Okay, so yeah, I get it. Okay, so you didn't fight it, you just kept up. No, you just, you just, not a problem. I'm not, I'm going to make sure that I, that I make a mental note. In fact, I'll tell you what, I'm going to even write it down. Okay. That you so, do not want to pay more than 4% for Mr. Commission. Mr. Mrs. Seller, I see, what you're telling me is that you, uh, you do not want to pay more than 4%, is that correct? That's, that's right. right. Okay, you know what, I'll make a mental note right now that you do not want to pay more than 4%, and I promise that would be, uh, what's we'll well, do I even have to say we we'll discuss it? No, you don't have to. I'll make a mental note. We'll discuss it. Oh, but I'll make a mental note of it right here that you don't want to pay 4%. So it's Thursday, good or Friday, better than just reading it from you. Okay. And then obviously we'll discuss it. <laughs> yeah, when we get there. I told you 4%. You're absolutely right. And then we start you know, building value for why you want to do that. So what you're telling me, so when we're saying, like, we're asking the media in front of me, then they say, like, oh, you know, I only want 4%. So, in that point, when I go into the, you know, uh, so what you're telling me is that you do not want me to work for it. So, what you're telling me is that you want me to discount my uh, my services by, you know, 
sorry percentage. Are you willing to discount your own price for that? For that one? Uh, no. So what you're telling me is you want me to work. Right. Now, they're going to say, they're going to say, I have someone that's going to do it at a discounted rate. Oh, okay. So what you're telling me then is you have an agent that will do it at a discounted rate. Is that correct? Yes. So Mr. or Mrs. Seller, is your, would you consider your home a discount home? No. Okay, so then why would you hire a discount broker? Well, it's not a discount broker, it's just that they're giving us a discount. Oh, I see. So what you're saying then is, is that they're going to pay 3% to the other agents that bring a buyer, and they're only going to pay themselves 1%. Is that correct? Well, I don't know how they're going to structure, whether 2% and 2% or 3% and 1%, whatever. The bottom line is we're getting 4%. Oh, I see. So what you're saying is you're not really worried about how they structure the deal so long as you don't pay anything more than 4%. Is that correct? I see. Okay, so what that tells me, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, is that you're open to creative ideas. And so what I'd like to do then is why don't we increase the price of the property by about 2%, okay? And then that'll cover the cost of the difference of the 6%, which is what I'm recommending that we do. Because I'm not a discount broker, and as you can tell, I know what I'm doing. So I'm clearly the agent for the job or you would have already signed the contract with that other agent. Isn't that correct? Yeah. That's correct. So let's get the paperwork out of the way and let's sign the let's see mm. Okay, so we're Right? Um, that's how I would handle that. Now, if they say, well, you know, we're, we're still not going to pay, we don't want to pay more than 4% commission. Uh, you know, we want you to give us a discount. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I'm not telling me what do you do for a living? Well, I'm such and such. Oh, you're such and such. And, and how often is it that you go into your employer's office and tell them that you want to discount your salary or your hourly wage? How often do you do that? Well, we don't. Okay, so if I do a good job for you and I get you the price that you want, why would you ask, be willing to ask me to do that if you wouldn't would be willing to ask your, your own employer to do that for you? And then they're going to be like, uh, 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 you know, they're not going to know what to say. Because nobody's going to do that. See, these are all common sense arguments. The challenge is, is that we feel like we need to defend our value, right? right. That's, what, that's what happens. What happens is we feel like when people are willing to, to, to drop all their commissions and do all that stuff, it's because they feel like, you know, they're not, they're not valued enough. So you have to know, you have to stand your ground and know what your value is.